Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Pick. Radiant Team Pick. Dire Team Pick. Dark Seer. Seconds left. You have five seconds left. Radiant team, pick. Bad Rider! You have ten seconds left. You have five seconds left. Dire Team Band. Oracle. Radiant Team Band. <laughs> now for the old razzle dazzle. You have 10 seconds left. Radiant Team Ban. Welcome back. We are only moments away from a second series of the day in the Immortal League for Group A. And that is uh, Virtus Pro taking on Team Nigma. It's going to be very exciting. I'm here with Capitalist and I've never said it wrong. Uh -huh. I appreciated it. Okay. You did a good job. You caught Thank yourself, you. I Thank thought. Thank you. We're very very nice. well done. Very nice. I am looking forward to the series. Uh, these two teams are actually on the shared first place at the moment. Three-way share, by the way. EG is in there too, but, you know, they'll play later today. Uh, Tsunami, I'm, I'm going to go to you first because we're moments away from the draft and I want to I wanna hear, you know, everything you've researched for this met con con match and then condense into like one sentence or two. Navi messed everything up. That would be where I stand, because so far it seemed like things were coming pretty clear, where mm -hmm. the top of the bracket was going to be in this group stage and stuff like that. Then EG gets 2 0 by Navi, and now I'm like, who's the you best in a group left. now? Because VP beat Navi, and overall you I would have, have considered VP to be much stronger than they are based off of their showing so far in the group. Now I don't know where anyone stands. I don't know why I, I would consider Enigma to be the favorites. Okay. Yes, I, if I did, I would if definitely If I can say first. something first, because we really like to hear your thoughts about what you think about this match, Cap, but unfortunately uh, we will have to for that until after the first game is done because we are ready to go to the draft panel the pantheon is ready and uh, we are going to say farewell we'll be right back after the game one of uh, vp versus nigma see you soon don't worry i'm dire team bad radiant team bad Folks, we're jumping into this one hot, and we got two hot dudes to cover it. Well, mostly BSJ and then Lacoste. Uh, oh, wow. All right. They're very far through this one. These are going to be our first impressions. Let's let's take a look at everything that uh, I was pretty much already done. Yeah, I said halfway, but it looks like in the last minute or so, there's just been rapid fire back and forth. So let's try to catch ourselves up as quickly as possible. Lacoste. Let's go fire it up. Uh, Bat driver, no steroids for him. No, nothing to increase his movement speed. Uh, Life stealer, that's the hero. That uh, increases uh, movement speed. Uh, just got infest him. I'm not sure about this hero. What I feel, uh, I want to see at least in this kind of a game, 
an item build that you just go in like armlet into Deso straight up fighting item. Uh, I need, I need more seconds to see what's going on on the other team. Virtus Pro picked up Darkseer and Oracle. I guess they just wanted to deny the Oracle pick and have a Darkseer plus Ember Spirit. That's going to be a pretty strong combo. Yeah, a life stealer as of now, from what I see, they drafted it because it's just unkillable. They don't really have to help it at all in the early game. They're going to have to draft a carry that brings them down. But as I see Slark's out, Anti-Mage, Troll, Morphling, uh, Faceless Void might be their last ban. Seems like the best hero left in the pool uh i don't know if the radiant lineup necess they ban razor okay so i'm thinking mm -hmm. void's likely for the virtus pro uh draft one of the few heroes left in the pool that really is annoying to play life stealer against lanes pretty well against bat it isn't the best versus the two supports but core to core goes really well there and they have a save with the yeah, with the oracle uh dark seer surprised a bit to see first round yeah, yeah i was talking about i thought yeah, this hero was kind of dumpstered we'll have to see how it plays out here uh effectively for people who haven't paid attention it, it's haste movement speed from surge now so any hero that was surpassing it by a large margin you're going from like 800 move speed to 550 on surge in the laning stage it's about the same once you get boots you're literally just losing movement speed on surge so it's a pretty huge nerf they didn't give them anything uh go for it and uh kind of kind of strange that they just you know he gets his one sub patch of the of the decade the, this was the like one of the only heroes that you said felt really weak coming out of what we saw in the past. Yeah. Did, did you say who else did you not like? Phoenix, uh, uh, Phoenix seemed pretty hard impacted. Yeah. Uh, we're still seeing it first round banned, though. It seems like I don't, I don't think these are the nerves that, you know, are going to influence the hero picking that much. Phoenix is still going to be a strong hero. They what increased the cooldown on Sunray. Two Sunray, base damage, two base damage and then uh, the talent. One of the talents is worse, too. Still interesting because, like you said, two of the things that you thought got impacted the most with the the changes, we're still seeing them in the first phase. Slardar, okay. nice enabler for Life Stealer. Life Stealer generally his only issue is getting kited and damage. So <laughs> immediately solved by Slardar. Not the best versus Oracle though, uh, in lane or in game. So they kind of already blocked the melee hero pick for Virtus Pro. They have Oracle plus one in that lane. Slaughter Rubik is a pretty strong dual lane and whenever Slaughter is matched up against any melee hero, I feel like Slaughter just comes on top of yeah. on top of that matchup. You also don't want to pick like the Drows or the yeah. Medusas against Batrider. Kind of annoying to play that matchup in the game. You do have the Oracle to save you, but I don't know. It, it feels really like all the lane counters that are good against Slaughter aren't necessarily good against Batrider. So instead, are they putting the Ember safe lane? looks like ILTW special I think they just put uh, him on the mid lane and have that profit on the safe lane. so have That's no one Slardar playing Rubik. it or you think the players are gonna swap what do you what do you think here I just think they saw this slaughter pick and they needed to adjust see what's uh, happening uh, I mean it's a mid bat rider I feel like uh, team Nigma has an upper hand in this one they like he kind of forced virtus pro to pick the heroes that they did not want to that's that's the feeling that i'm getting here i agree i think we on his best hero the bat rider uh miracle set up to carry the game absolutely with life stealer the only threat to him dying is is the death prophet silence and the earth spirit silence but that's they don't have any immediate burst damage to follow that up. Sometimes you'll be playing against, you know, like a lion type nuke, Alina, and then if you get silence, you just die before you get rage off. In this case, he has to basically be getting hit by three or four heroes, maybe being hit by Death Prophet ult while silenced. Uh, so that fact that he's not scared of dying means he can just itemize purely offensively, like you were talking about Armla Deso. And uh, I don't think Oracle is going to be enough to, to protect this lineup. So I'm really favoring the Team Nigma draft based on the rapid fire catch up we had to do in this uh, assessment here oh so the the odds are in line with you as well from egb.com as you can see on your screen right now i do have a question and about life stealer i feel like every single time i am on a panel and it gets locked in the analysts say that they hate this hero how do you feel about it in this lineup and where, where does some of that hate come from with the life stealer right now across I, I just don't feel the hero is as strong as any like other top tier carry 
use right now. Do you have someone to, you know, buff you up, like a mag, or in this case, Lardar? A uh, Lifestealer can be that just unkillable beast. Like, uh, at this hero is kind of a sleeper, but is also weaker than the rest of the carries. But if he's having a good game, like you might say, yeah, why is Lifestealer not picked more often? And I think this, this game is going to be the case. Okay, it seems like it might be a good Lifestealer game. It's definitely going to be a good game to watch. This is one of the series that, all in all, you look at the schedule for today, it's one of the ones that we were definitely anticipating. And we got a great duo to cast all the action. Very good. Total spawn. Thank you very much, Rich. Yes, I'm here with Fogged, ready to take you through this uh, this banger of a series. Uh, we've, we've seen the draft. Fogged, uh, what do you reckon? First thing that sort of strikes out to me is that uh, they have let Nigma get the Weeha bat. And yes, says, they have. Uh, this has been a hero player combination that a lot of teams have struggled to deal with in this uh, Omega League. Have VP got the, got the answer for it? Uh, at least they have Oracle like save. Uh, they have some elusive hero with like the bat or uh, with the Ember Spirit versus the bat too. But what I've seen, I, I mean, I've just seen have run away with these games. He makes so much space. They're getting aggro here up on the top lane. RMN will tank most of that pressure. Okay, so bringing three heroes top right at the start. Um, that means I mean their lanes are kind of obvious. Or they, they have to yeah. set them up right. Like the Ember has to go bottom. Death Prophet kind of has to go mid. You can't put the Ember. Uh, Ember versus Batrider mid just sounds like a disaster. Sure, but I mean it's not like I mean this bottom lane is still not easy for the no, Ember. No, it's right? very tough for him. In yeah. fact, I think this is uh, Slaughter is just so good versus these melee heroes. And Ember, he's. Not one of those high armor melee heroes. Like the Agi heroes, usually like oh, seven armor or something, right? To start, Ember is one of the lowest. He's at like three as an Agi hero at starting armor. So that physical damage definitely does hurt quite a bit. And Rubik harassment too. Yeah, sh it should be a tough time for our LTW. Up there for sure. And then yeah, there's this mid lane. We'll see how this one starts early on. I guess. As the the DP, I mean, how does this one go? I feel like Weeha is still still going to be able to put some pressure onto to this DP, and you know, if these stacks get up, it gets the early point in flame break. Mm -hmm. There's still going to be opportunities where where Weeha can go in on the DP. Yeah, it's just it's, I think it's going to be a lot about how no one controls the lane, which is pushing it out constantly with Crypt Swarm. The animation on it is so damn good now. But I think it's going to be a lot around playing around like Siphon Charges too. If you can bait a Siphon Charge, that's when you'll see Weeha start to get really aggressive. But yeah, I think watching no one, just just spam like clarities, get your bottle, your mangoes, etc. Force the wave in constantly onto the Batrider so he can't double up and just dive you. And then top lane, uh, as talked about in the panel, we're, we're seeing the Life Stealer in play. Uh, but definitely to agree with sort of Lacoste's point, this, this is a game where uh, a core that, that can a lot of the times in this patch feel underwhelming uh, can succeed, right? Because you've got a lot of great heroes to to make yeah. sure that he has a great time, right? The, the physical buffs from the Venge and, and the Slardar is going to land to hit super hard, and he's going to have that fantastic Vessel of the Bat. Two Vessels. He's Slardar he slums and jumps inside of Slardar, too. That's what we saw, what? I mean, it's dating back a bit but much, but that was a Team Nigma when they were Team Liquid Special. Remember the Slardar Lifestealer at Manila? That, oh, that Manila Major, that's what they played every single game, so they're very familiar with it. Sure, it was with some different players and stuff like that, too, but something that they're definitely very aware of. We've seen that mid matchup already. You see, he's doing very well on this uh, Death Prophet. He has level three now, so yeah, he's he is, constantly yeah. nuking the wave in. Weeha is having a tough time pushing it in. Stick charges too. Looks yeah, like no one's going to do really well on this one. Yeah, go straight for this game. As yeah. long as he doesn't get like dove for a kill threat, that's when he's going to do really well. He's going to be able to outlast hit this bat. I mean, is anyone going to be making moves on on either side really towards that mid lane? Look at these side lane supports. Four minute runes potentially. That's just about it. I don't think no anyone really makes too many aggressive moves beside that. So bottom. <sighs> May just go down here. One oh more hit. Uh, GH gets him. He's got it. First blood for GH. Definitely in the, in the lane that we did feel was going to be the, the toughest on the map, really. The, the pressure from the Rubik. Not going to be fun at all for this Oracle and Ember to try and deal with in the early levels. No, absolutely. That is that is really going to be the big one that we're looking for those kills constantly. Did see the Oracle. He took all the pressure. And Ember Spirit's actually still farming. So, that's, you know, you lose your support, but that's kind of his job. Yeah, that's so true. That. So, you know, you're, you're not too dissatisfied with what's going on there inside of VP. No one continuing to do good in mid. Just constantly trading, hitting him. Yeah, this is a really, really solid opening for the, from no one in the mid lane. Yeah. Bottom lane. I'll have a bit uh -oh. of an attempt on to solo. Bash comes out from mind control as they'll run him down. Just Prep him blocks. for the final hit. There it is. They don't even need it to kill him. They can turn and use that oh, second no. bash uh -oh. onto IRDW. Now he's in a bit of a bit of trouble. He's got the fairy fire and the slider fist. 
will stop them from diving any further. But yeah, this pressure just relentless down bottom. But but definitely, as you say, though, three and a half minutes in, the CS on ILTW, it's considering the situation, you have got to be happy that you're still able to hit the creeps and actually nearly taking down mind control there as he only just gets away. Yeah, he has to wait for his regen to actually come down. GH also unhealthy. He is low, though, and his Oracle has to run all the way back. It's fortunate that he's able to push them away here because this would have been a big time where they can really get on top of him there and pressure him a lot. And yeah, I mean, no, continue to do very well in this matchup. Rush the boots, plus the wand. He's yeah, now no, in a position where he, he shouldn't die. Oh, he yeah. should keep his lead. And, and if he does get gone on, there's going to be time for people to TP in. Yeah. Zyats can come in and look for the counter players, the Earth Spirit. He's Four actually getting aggro. He gets hey, a with haste. With this haste ring, that, that should do it. I mean, Weehaw's going to try and fly away with the Firefly. No one is, is out of mana. So, so no further nuke damage to come out from him. But so yeah, solid stuff from VP in this mid lane and the bottom lane. Despite those deaths, as I say, just this is a hard lane for, for VP to play into, but they're doing it smart. They're getting the farm for their Ember. Yep. Doing a good job with those lasses. We might He's even trying to pick up a raindrop to deal with the bridge because he's actually not last hitting well at oh, all. Hello. He's just dead. All righty. Raindrop not saving you this time. On top lane, VP, they're getting in a aggro onto RMN. Very Zaya nice. Su surge forwards, and they're going to have this kill. VP, keeping it even here so far in the first few minutes of gameplay. Two to two. Yep, we see that bottle from top from the Darkseer being passed off to Earth Spirit. We have bounty runes coming up in a few seconds, so they're going to look to at least get... ...много. Идет забирает первую баунти руну. Возможно, даже заберет вторую. И коэффициент от паре матч подъезжают обновленные на карту. Мы видим, что здесь все гораздо более уверенно для ВП. Yeah, also going to be able to get those extra charges from the bounty rune spawning bottom. Top yep. lane, pressure's going to be putting on to Miracle. They know with RMN coming over to mid, Miracle's a, a little vulnerable. He does still have the rage and TP, so we'll have a way out if he feels the need to, to pop the two of them. But the right move to make, as you said, because they saw, they see the bench TP mid. ILTW this time, doesn't look like he's got a way to play around Ooh, it. The, oh, the chains nearly did it. Uh, it's not, not enough, though. The right click still coming in from GH. Top lane, Miracle turning to try and punch back into Rezo. Rezo will surge himself away. He's going to leave Zyus under the tower, but he's got to kick back onto the life stealer. He can step his way out of danger. See that item build? Just the naked might is coming out for our life stealer. Miracle is going all in for that one here. Picks up just, just the starting oh. item, and then he's going to have it. He I almost mean, has it done already. Yeah, if you get away with it this quick, that's... Nah, that's the dream. Not necessarily the dream for your teammates when you see a life stealer go to land and cure straight up, but you're getting away with it. You're you're going to be very happy with that timing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a four protect one for a life stealer, not your traditional four protect one. So they really want to make sure that Miracle is a super farm beast as bottom. Getting aggressive again. Just continuing to try and pressure ILTW as much as they can before he hits the six. Won't be able to finish him off though, Inside, He's in with the counter play. He's able to find the connection onto Mind Control, into the slow. ILTW is salving up, able to run back in. And with the nukes, the Slight of Fist, and the Purifying Flames, they secure themselves another kill on this bottom lane. Just doing a, a great job, really, just across the board of uh, making sure that all three lanes here for VP uh, are off to a, a fantastic start. Look at the farm ac across all three cores. It's it's pretty much perfect on all three cores of VP. Yeah, and I like how they're doing this. Uh, I mean, it's very ILTW because I think he's one of the ones that originally started doing the build, just the slight chains. Even though he's versus a lane that can't prop, proc his flame guard, he doesn't care. He's playing with Oracle. He just wants that max burst damage and that little bit of extra control to go for the kills. It's working. It's absolutely working down there. They've actually, yeah, they've won. I mean, they kind of won two out of the three it's, lanes. It, Top lane, very kind of a close. trade, but it's, it's very close. Yeah, it's just good. the fact that, yeah, they've got three cores in a great place. Nigma, they're falling a little bit behind on that bottom lane with the with the farm and the slaughter. Yep, we're seeing no one. Weha is starting to catch up to him again now. Once those levels build up on Let's the back, can, get the player. can he and kick him go. under? Kick him under. He's going to get a couple of tower hits in, but Weha with the firefly will be speed enough to keep his distance and. Even posturing very aggressively there, knowing that there's no further threat from the two of them. I think no one got hit by a sticky stack right before he was looking to go in. I think he was up to four or five stacks. So I think he was scared. Time. Yeah, he was scared to actually go in when the Earth Spirit did it look like. Yeah, it it looked like they maybe had a chance, but a bit tough. See the mango tree coming out for the side of VP. Pretty good mango. They have a pretty good mango team. I'm with some nukes, yeah, Ember always can use that as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this this hero Ember wants to wants to be spamming the spells in the fights, but uh, notoriously has a a very small mana pool. Oh, who found the faded brooch? It just says found by. Someone will uh, pick it up in a bit, I'm sure. <laughs>
Mind control. Lots of rotation. They're going to try and go from it. What sort of backups coming in from Nigma? Uh, it isn't going to be any. PH is also going to get caught out by the chains, but the four of them here. BP, some of this fantastic early CIS aggression that you Very love nice. to see from the squad. It's it's coming out. Movement from no one secures themselves a second kill bomb. Love that they're going to be this aggressive. That's what their lineup is really going to all be about, is fighting nonstop. Sure, they have to wait on exorcism come mid-game, but once this Dark Seer is starting to get online too, he's going to join the fray. He almost has max Ion Shell and has great heroes to carry it, with that Ember Spirit in particular. So yeah, very aggressive moves. Great start off oh. these first nine minutes. And, oh. He's going to seize an opportunity here to try for a freebie there. Nice flame break onto the Earth Spirit. Knocks him back so he cannot roll away. But no one, he's going to go for the counter play. Pop in the Exorcism. But the Firefly, it's enough for Weeha to get himself out of reach of the Ghost. No one's still trying to dive in. That final crit swarm isn't oh, he enough to get it. What the? He's going deep for this one. No one, he's got the Siphon, but it isn't enough. As That, that, that was that, I mean, a that's... kind of a feed a little bit there. Yeah, he just went yeah. way too aggro. I mean, that... Yeah, that's that. That feels like the sign of a tilted mid. Even though he shouldn't be tilted, he's he's having a great solid start. No one, but diving in like that, throwing everything in for for a kill that you're not going to get. It's you, you can't make those plays. No, that was. I mean, it's way too over. It's just over aggression. It's because he popped exorcism. And he's he's like, like, I oh, need to make something yeah. happen with this exorcism. But he just backs up and farms. It's not that bad. Yeah, he just goes up and he literally just gives up a free kill. He didn't see the Venge rotating in though at first. He doesn't have ward coverage on that side. Sure, but still, but still he's still taking tower hits. It. Exactly. It's yeah. it's already such an aggressive position. So. We'll get punished. We see instant smoke from Nigma as they're setting up for these runes. The bounty runes up top. Rezo with this bottle wants to try to claim it, but we'll get halted. Yeah. And they might actually have the control yeah, for it. They're, they're going to be able to turn on him pretty easily, dragging him back into the, the clutch is a miracle. And we'll set up ill for the life stealer. GH able to head up to the high ground and grab that bouncer in. Down bottom, though. Punishment there for Weehar as VP, the three of them, do get the jump on him. And, um, even further down bottom, mind control. <laughs> He'll find himself a, a kill. Yep. Literally. Yes. Once Slardar hits this level six, level seven, you start pose and kill threat if anyone does show up alone. GH will get brought down from a rotation from Zayek. A lot, a lot, a lot of back and forth here already. Seven for seven. Mm -hmm. That's the 1k in it. This is a... Uh, a uh, close bit of back and forth so far, and yeah, you really sort of see where the, the net worth varies in terms of balance. Nigma's lineup already starting to hit, lead towards that, that just building all around this this big old miracle life stealer. Yep. As he's the one taking the lead here, and he's going to find an opportunity for a, another kill onto Zayat. He has so many mashups that this life series just god. This rage rage in this game is going to be really potent versus so many of these heroes. They just yeah. they're majority magic damage. You look at their team. Sure, exorcism as well as the sleight of fist is that strong physical damage that they'll have in the mid game. But at the moment, you know this life series is going to definitely reign supreme when he shows up. Yeah, at least for VP, they've they've got what, a couple of silences, right? So something yes. that he's definitely going to have to. Watch Watch out for in the fights, but at the same time, he, he's got the save. Swaps yeah. are going to be there if he ever gets caught in a frontline silence. BP. Being grabbed again. Mind Control's going to come in with a TP. He's going to look over towards Solo. Solo goes straight for the false promise on him. But we are in with the lasso, and there'll almost certainly be enough damage to pop Solo. After the false promise comes to a finish, as Nigma will manage to take him out. So much action. 18 kills. 12 minutes, all focusing around mid tower now. Miracle, that gonna go for the armor build. I think it's a really appropriate build this game. He has the methods of delivery. Oh yeah, so yeah. he's ready. Whenever to you have this, you're all about fighting. Exactly. So, I like that he's gonna go for that. And this chase is right. He's in trouble. I mean, this is the thing with the, with the bat against the earth spirit. We are each and every time. It's, it, it, it's you can't escape him. You you cannot roll away if you've already used the kick. We are always going to be able to close in above you and over you. So, rolling away is is never really an option. See, no, and he's going to be going for this Yule Scepter this game, as you tend to on Death Prophets. However, there are plays around it. They do have Venge versus this Death Prophet who's going to be going for it. You can swap him out of the Yules, so it's not that great of a actual saving thing. Same thing of Venge versus Oracle. Oracle's cast range on False Promise early, not the greatest, so repositioning is going to be a big one. I feel going to be playing out in the mid game here for no one to try to protect himself. See that progress shortly, though, as they're still trying to, they really want to press forward and get this mid tower. See, even Zeiss is running toward the mid lane. Yeah. They're all starting to actually run toward mid tower. It's, it's actually looks like so many five heroes for VP. They want this tower. I mean, you can see as well. Nick sure. is responding. They're, they see everybody rotating in. They really want to hold this one as well. No one's got to be careful with the cast, though. You know that GH is always going to be hunting for that exorcism steal. Yep. 
Down bottom, RMCW, they're going to be able to find the setup, but he's got the backup. Solo comes in straight away with the silence onto mind control. They'll turn and kill the slaughter. So they can go to the mod. He's diving in deeper. ILTW is going to be able to get the chains onto the poor old Venge. Silence as well, making sure the GH cannot come in with any counterplay. We are going to go for the lasso, but there's five heroes here ready to run him down. Science has the control with the kick and the silence. More kills for ILTW now, starting to, to get this safe lane ever incredibly active early on. And even though Nygma saw all this, they see the, the with their wards, look at the ward placement. They see everybody rotating. My control overplays his hand a little bit. He's still very squishy, very fragile on the slaughter. Yeah, he's falling behind. Yeah, he really is, just dies almost immediately. And they're utilizing this timing. Mid-game timing, early game timing. Mech is finished up on Darkseer. Death Prophet's super strong right now. This is very ideal right now for them to be doing this and pressing the issue for this tower. Yeah, this tower is... He's very, very nearly taken away. No yep. one. I mean, at the moment, they're just trying to, to take it without committing the ghost. An extra TP returning to lane as Weeha's back in. They are going to be able to get on top of him, though, with the chain. Zayas rolls forward. The silence, it catches out the Rubik. Swap from RMN, keeping Weeha safe, but the slider fist still bees him low. Aggressive breath of ILTW. He's trying to dive in for this. No one committing with the exorcism, pushing back RMN. RMN going for a swap on no one, trying to get him under the tower, but it ends up getting RMN killed off. They'll look over towards Mind Control as well. They're just splitting them up perfectly here, VP, forcing Nigma to the side in a situation where they just don't have the numbers. The chains come out again. And Another slider fist secures another kill for ILTW. He's going in. Rem the Ford. The oh, chain. Baby. ILTW just going crazy here. As this Ember, 6 1 and 8, and 15 minutes in, it just doesn't stop here from VP. As they're diving tier 3 towers at the 15 minute mark. ILTW, he's dropping the aggro tips onto Miracle. Holy moly, I mean that arcane rune on Ember, it really does wonders in these type of fights, these type of skirmishes, when you just start snowballing kills like that. And again, utilizing this timing, Darkseer mech, they have max ion shell, they have heroes that can use it. Yeah, he's just they in. just run at him. Yeah, they're, and they're unable to really stop it because of how far behind, in particular, like my control. Their real big frontliner besides Miracle, he is so far behind. I actually saw my control, he looked like he was farming bottom, and then they're like, dude, we're getting dove way too hard. We actually need you to try to help us. He runs in and just dies immediately. So he gets set back even more. Yeah, great plays from VP so far this early game. Their calls have been on point. 17 to 11, yeah. setting themselves up for success. I mean, it, there's some games with, with the VP score where, where you can sort of just feel it from the first few minutes of play that, you know, they're in a very good place when it comes to, to the matchups, the lanes they've got. And this game, we, we saw it there at the beginning. All three cores up to a great position. Uh, and now that they've entered this this early mid game, they're just making yeah, everything's gone to plan. You know, they've drafted yep. these five heroes. They've got exactly what they wanted out of the first pre-15 minutes of the game. They're going to be able to make the moves that, that planned for when they came in with these heroes. Yep, and they're so mobile is the biggest thing I'm noticing. Everyone's just getting there so fast. Ember, Earth Spirit, Darkseer Surge, Death Prophet. Everyone just sandwiches there and gets together so quickly. Yeah, they're doing perfect job so far. Oh, Zaitz. Having a little deep here, able to get the silence on the two of them. TPs are coming in. Zayat, so I don't know if he's able to get out of this one. He's going to try with the roll. Actually, doesn't get blocked off by Miracle, but the corrosives on him. They've got the vision as they'll dive in and will be able to claim the life of the Earth Spirit. Yeah, really still loving that aggression. Even though they do die up top, it's still a good aggressive move. They're just posturing themselves very well in this game. Nigma, they need something to try to kind of bring them back here. So it looks like it's going to be a smoke, my control. With Miracle, they're feeling a bit strong right now. Oh, RMCW. Is he? Is he? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's back and he's back. Back in. The silence. Oh, hang on. Is there any safe? There is. Iron Man comes into the last moment with the swap. Well, of course, mean that Iron Man loses his life, and there's the early time. They're, they want to chase more. I mean, RMCW, he hits hard now. He's got a full Zesso done at 17 minutes at this ember. He's in onto Mind Control. Mind Control trying to run. RTW is going to have the slight chains combo up again in a second and should be able to catch this. There it is. Locks him down. Solo is able to come in for, for the kill secure. Hey, I mean, he's playing this Ember actually so damn well. I love this. Like, I mean, now he's starting to get the build up of the Flame Guard, but like, yeah. just his slight chain usage so far has been insane for their chase potential. Just constantly being able to catch these heroes that if they didn't have it, it would be tough because it's all on the Earth Spirit to really catch them. But oh, yeah. the slight change is really making the difference. They're getting on these heroes oh, over and over again. We are trying to skip the creeps, oh, what but the? he's on his own sights and no one in the neighborhood. And we are, he's running. He's not going to make it away though. Mid lane as well. GH2. BP, they are just everywhere. 
And, and this build as well from IRTW, if he's able to pull this off, this is going to be just so destructive. This yep. Deso into a straight AC that he's queuing up. No defensive items. He's ready to go. He knows that he's got the saves from his Oracle, his Darkseer. Mm -hmm. He just wants to, to cut through these heroes, which he's been doing excellently so far. 7, 1, and 10. This Ember safe lane just continues to perform. Yeah, and I think they're starting to realize magic damage on the side of Enigma isn't that high. Sure, it's like Fade Bolt and Bat Rider and some of these vegetables, yep. but it's mostly that physical damage. So if he gets this, they're super strong. And even with this Deso right now, they can throw. They can just pop Ghost with that Deso. It, it'll be very difficult oh, for Enigma. Standing a little close here, but he's got the Force. Okay. Even so, though, I mean, you've got to be careful how close you come to, to these heroes. We've seen with the, the reach that the Ember has. Oh, God, full Greaves already, too. So a Darkseer, I mean, if he gets hazed or anything up, if he gets open wounds, he has a lot of different ways to play around it now, too. That extra heal as well. And even look, this Death, Death Prophet, he has Yules and almost Lotus Orb already done. So his armor, he's going to be good. He's going to have ways to protect oh, himself, too. They're just finding so many catches. Just from lane to lane. Look at this. They're no all over the place, and no one, he's even looking for more. He's away from Arm, and he says, yeah, screw the support. Let's go and make Mind Control's life even more of a misery in this game oh, as they're hunting man. him down bullying mind control out of the game as he's really falling down there bottom four net worth and a few more deaths like that he's going to be touching the bottom of this game he is not yeah he is not recovering very well at all after that landing phase he's just getting bullied no mercy by vp yeah getting these aggressive wards down now too it looks like enigma they're expecting that roche to come out but they're actually looking to stay aggressive look for aggressive moves on VP. Right, look, things are looking real good for them right now. Full map control up to this 20 minute mark with a very good lineup. Yeah, and I think in the mid game fights and in these fights, if they do have a lead, you know, Life Stealer, his damage, it's not really the highest. He has to get enabled by that Slard He's going to look at the up. back lines first. You know, he's going to get on top of RMN. Make sure there's no save potential for Miracle. Miracle's got to go for the Rage TP. He's got it. And he is away. Nothing to cancel through that magic immunity. Straight to Roche. Now they've got the timing with it. They forced heroes back. I think, but there's no way they can test the fight here. Their actual team fight draft is it's their their draft isn't really about team fighting. It's about these small skirmishes and pickoffs. It is. They've lost them all. Yeah, they yeah, haven't it, been able to actually take any of the fights versus VP at all. I think straight up so far it's just been a, a demonstration of of how VP, they've got a strategy that, that counts as exactly as you say what Nigma wants to yep. do when they run this Weeha Bat Rider. Yep. This Bat Rider that we've seen just take over so many games against so many of the teams here. VP, I mean, as you do, right, you're playing against Nigma. You've got to have a plan against the Weeha Bat if you're laying it through the draft. And so far, VP's plan and, and answer towards it has seemed pretty spot on. They, they've come in with a way that that's making it very hard for Weeha to, to do anything as the bat. And speaking of Weeha, we see him go down here again, trying to do some shenanigans behind towers, and now also GH being chased. They have the catch too. He's got another remnant to work with, but now out of mana, out of time. They're just, they're just everywhere, VP here, this is... I mean, look at these TP, it's constant, yeah. right? Everyone's just TPing, they've got, all, they've got their two tier one still up. They can just look to make all these aggressive moves, and I mean, it's it's looking picture perfect right now for them. 25 to 12. Oh, there's so. mistakes. I mean, they're just uh, my control just still has no game. He's having one of the rough ones. I think he's one in eight in this game. How many times they've actually been able to punish him down bottom? Yeah, yeah one you're eight right. and five. That's been been a rough one for him. Yeah, and we mentioned how there's a lot of stealer. You know, he has this infest in the mid game. We're now really in the mid game, and I don't know. I think Slaughter may just be getting the blink dagger now. That rider didn't have his either at a time for them to utilize that either. So, yeah, he's he's going for the BKB. He feels like he needs it because of all this magic damage on VP. It's looking real hard for them here. Miracle, he's going to need some crazy cleanup inside of the fights. But they've already started pick. Like we said, they've already started picking up the items to counter him. They already have this Lotus Orb on the Death Prophet. And it just don't stop. No, it does not. It does not stop here from VP. Ferocious and everywhere across the map. My LTW says, screw it. I don't need AC. I'm going to damage. I mean, he's, dude, he's probably like, we're going to... Oh, oh, oh it's starting to see a bit of a break in. In, the, in the army of VP here with Solo down. He is going to buy back. Okay, we are. Lasso. He's got the control off to no one, but they haven't quite got the damage. No one's able to use up. And Miracle, he's stuck on the front line. He's silent. He can't get him. He can't get a single spell off. The resolution's able to run away. Only Solo falling in that fight. Everybody else kept alive. And now they're up to the high ground. 
I, I, I think ILTW picks up Chrysalis, as you said, instead of the AC, because he's like, I'm not even going to get the chance no. to finish an AC in this game. We are crushing them that hard. Yep, and no one hey, off to the high ground. He's full health again. Solo buys back, joins into the fight afterwards, even though he died at the start. Yeah, it's it's out of control here. Yeah. Miracle, he can't do this one on his own. No, not especially not as a life stealer. They no. needed those those plays to to go more favorably for them early on, and, and this is you know a game where Miracle's farm is the life stealer. It, it's pretty perfect, right? He got that quick Midas. It just doesn't matter at this stage. It they're the 10k down, VP just continuing to go at full power this game. All three cores just popping off. I mean, the whole team yeah. popping off. I think that. I mean, I think that their lanes just ended up going better than I think Nigma expected, right? That Ember plus Oracle. The, the way bottom, they played the bombs. Ember just the Ember dominated. He yeah. wasn't pressured almost at all, and they just were looking for kills. Look, look, 110 last hits. He, this is not a farming Ember. This is a killing Ember. He didn't really care after he got the first start. Once he got the level five, it was just all about the frags and just shutting down my control. Excellent play from that bottom lane for sure. Well, let's see what Nigma can do here. They're going to try and come out with a smoke. See if they can catch someone off guard. My control the with, finally. With that setup, yeah, they what kind of jump can they get? VP are pretty close to to one another. They they can certainly return. Here's no one. They're so rich He's now. He's going to lead him with the yours. Turn for the silence onto our men. In they go on the back lines. Mind control tries to jump from Miracle. They'll turn over towards Solo. Solo, he's able to get the false promise off of himself. They can't even kill the Oracle. As Solo's going to be saved underneath the wall. Miracle caught out and surrounded. They kick him over with the boulder. As it's two down on Nigma, the rest of them just trying to desperately escape. But GH, there's no TP potential for him there. So many ways to cancel it. You can see there's solo as well. He's keeping it cool. He looks so he's, serious. He's in the zone. I love it. He knows that, you know, that this game ain't over yet. I don't think I've seen VP play at this kind of style but of this just, is... just slamming since the old VP. When yeah, they were just is, dominating yeah. games. Like, it's 32 kills in 24 minutes. Like, they are or 25 minutes. Yeah, but VP's He's back. Still, like, VP they're, they're is back. Just... This is, if they can do more of this, they're, they're going to be, they, they are a team to, to really be feared. If, yeah. if they can manage to consistently pull off this level of, of maneuvers, in the games they play. I just love how they're being, they're just relentless. Look at this, it's non-stop looking for kills here. Anytime that Nygma's trying to do any sneaky cutting waves, grabbing bounties, they're gonna pay. VP is not letting them gain away with any of these. And it's getting rough from back sure you see that he's it's nearly, nearly the lowest level in the game. Yeah. As well as struggling. nearly the lowest at work. And now, I mean, look at the plethora of items. That Death Prophet has Lotus or Baganim's level 18 on top of Yules with an Essence Ring thrown on top too. Some more survivability, sure. It's really Miracle versus the world here, and the rest of his, his other cores are just not really there for him. Yep. And here we have it, VP. They're ready to, to hit back hard with the smoke themselves. I saw the smoke of, of Nick just sort of go out with the sizzle. VPs is, is definitely going to hit with a bang if the oh, yeah. last 26 minutes are anything to go by. Just charging in, looking for a battle. They know how much stronger they are. They know that there's no way Nygma can take a real fight. GH, yeah. he spotted bottom. Just it's trying to push these lanes out. Yeah. Trying to get that money for the blink dagger. He's so close. He's so close. And now he's going to be 200 further away. To the next tower. I just cleaning up the map now, VP. Yeah, look, they constantly have mangoes ferried in their bags too, because because of the mango tree that we mentioned early on. Yeah, they're just not giving any breathing room for Nigma. Nigma unable to actually take any fight. Like we said, their, their team fight draft is just not really there, and VP was such a lead. It's just. And they're going to make it look easy really here with this push. Oh, high ground push, they go. What's going to stop? Where's the answer from Nigma? Double blinks online also. So they have three blink daggers now on Nigma, but do they actually have the damage to bring anybody down with those? Warman, he's going to die to a slight. They jump oh, in the back line. Awesome respect from RCW as well, letting no one, uh, no one finish that one over Fim's South. They're going to look for Miracle of Mind Control. They tried to commit. He chains around to Miracle. He's dragged back. He's dead. He doesn't have buyback. It's a triple kill for no one. You're probably going to see the G's being dropped soon. As this game, 37 to 13, just 27 minutes in. A second set of racks going down. No Miracle Lifestealer for 40 seconds. It's got to be over. <laughs> 
two sets of racks, the Lifestealer solo core. Not a whole lot of ways back in the game for Team Nigma here versus VP. I mean, yeah, VP will be more than happily play this one sure. out there. Feels good. Yeah, this Thank game you. is going to be getting the, the adrenaline going here for the squad. Yeah. This is, you know, this is what they strive for as a team. This is the dosa that VP excels at. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing really is having I mean, the, the way that they played around their draft, but just the way that they set up these lanes. Like, the Ember bottom did better than I expected by a good amount. Death Prophet did amazing versus Batrider mid, and they've just been making all these smooth, natural moves just from lane to lane, just very hyper-aggressive, too, the way they forced the issue, right? We saw it was like, oh, 10, 12 minutes in. Even though there's wards up, and Nigma sees everything, VP still won two back-to-back 5-0 -back fights just because of the way that they're lineup works and the way those lanes did progress. Time to, to continue the cleanup here for yep. VP, top lane. Rez was like, hello. That's a Batrider with a BKB. But he's got backup coming near. Can he find him? Let's go for the vacuum. He sees the creeps following. He sees the creeps in. Uh, he's going to be able to set this up. We are. He's got the, the BKB blink. and the blink, so he should be able to, to play it safe and TP out of here with the BKB. He's uh, trying to hold the BKB. And he's got and need to pop it. There we go. BKB and a TP away, and he'll he'll be fine. He'll live another day. But this tower on the top lane, the same cannot be said as VP will take this without any contest from Nigma. I, how do you fight? You're gonna need some type of miracle here on Team Nigma. Just, they have to get some repositioning to get some number advantage somehow versus VP. Grab them into the base, swap them into the tier four or something like that, because they're just too far behind to really take just any type of real heads up fight. Yeah, they're, they're smashing these fights and they're, yeah. they're not even spending all their money. No one holding onto 4K gold. He's ready to straight up just grab a BKB, get uh, himself into an even safer spot for, for looking to siege the high ground, take the final set of racks. Yeah, they're in such a good spot. How long do we have on Roche? About 30 seconds. If they want to be super safe, they just play around this area, wait yeah. for that to spawn, force Nigma's hand to fight around the Roche pit, and then they should be pretty good. As long as they don't split up. It's the only way that I think that's the only way the VP can start to lose their lead yeah. is if they start splitting away from each other. So just stay as a clustered five around Roche pit. That's what they're going to continue to do. And Nigma gets two bounty runes, but yeah, not what they were looking for. Yeah, you see a Miracles build as well. He's. He knows the only sort of chance of getting back in is if he's able to pop the rage and, and actually kill Just someone. Kill so he's going full on for, for this super hard hitting build. The uh, the Deso into Daedalus. But I mean, even then, it's it's just the the, the items. You look at they these, have so much they, armor on everybody the, now. They've yeah. got plate mails all over the place. 34 on one hero, 20, or 28 on another. I believe Death Prophet's pretty close to that too, sitting at like a healthy 24. Yeah. Yeah, full of Shiva's guard now on Reza. Yeah. Good itemization, good preparation. Roche spawns. Easy cleanup here for VP. Enigma just, they're just gonna try to get the most out of the lanes in the meantime, push them out as far as they can. Oh, they really be, struggling. Yeah, and, and an easy rush here for VP. One and 11 on mind control, level 13. He's just, I mean, at this point, of course, he just can't catch up because you have to catch up through kills and everything as a Slardar, but. Man, they really they did not. They really made sure that he did not have a game. Yeah, they they, they just crushed him. They really did. But it was as you know, we were saying in the lane that you know, it should have. I feel on paper gonna gonna a little better for for the Slardar. It does uh, feel like it. Yeah. So, you know, the setup they did have down there. They just got a little they, bit. I mean, I guess I got a little bit outplayed here by LTW as well. Solo. Yeah. No, it was the the play from from VP just all across the board. But it, it's been outplaying a half from VP this game. Just playing. Under their strengths, playing to that aggression. I, I see, I, you know, CIS teams with their darks here sometimes. You know, they, these guys, they know what they're doing with this, this type of aggro setup here in the mid game. Nigma smoked again. Trying to find some type of split off here. Try to catch somebody away from the five man unit, but no, VP knows. They just got to stick together. I see what Nigma can do here. They've struggled to, to vend on the other two lanes. Can they pull off anything different on this top one? They have a repair kit at least to stall it. Some slight moments here, but level 20 on the death prop. Oh, they're going to get the swap in on the Ember. He's got the Aegis, though, so they're only going to be able to take him down the ones. Can they do it a second time? They have a lost RMN. ILTW back up. And Miracle's just in. And it's got no buyback on the life stealer. This should be the cleanup from VP, pushing them back towards the fountain. 1k crits with those sights. Even going into the fountain there and letting the ghost kind of tease him a bit. Oh, the ghost actually nearly getting we are. Oh. Has to be careful. 
It's top lane. It will be theirs. VP pushing on. Nigma still holding on in this game, almost certainly discussing what the plan's going to be for. As this game won 40 to 13, 20k up VP. As they border on finishing this final set of racks. We are trying to, to step in and slow them down, but there's no pushing back this squad right now. And he's getting gone on immediately. BKB will be popped. He's trying to push Tyre into the fountain, won't be able to. A GH as well. Seeing if he can bait them into the fountain. But not something that VP is going to be falling for. And that they'll tap out. They GG call is called. VP here take what? game one against Nigma and yeah, VP on fire. This is yeah. this is this is Vert this is Virtus Pro. This is the VP that you want to see. I miss this VP. That looks nice. I like seeing no one running around just killing everybody. Same with ILTW. They look super comfortable with their heroes. Yep. Super comfortable with their draft. Very comfortable with what they're playing against to drain the lanes. I like. I actually. 